Oh, William Masters, the patriarch of all. He came from far away. My visit to Palmerston Atoll came just at the last moment. My uh, Shearward and I were actually headed directly for it after we left Tahiti. I read about a most fascinating gentleman, an Englishman, who had inhabited the island in 1860 with his three Polynesian wives. They had actually inhabited a small part of the atoll, barely, there it is coming into the screen now, barely one mile in um, a square. And he had carefully divided the island b between his three wives and their descendant families. Um, I was very curious about this uh, grand mixture there, and so my camera and I went ashore, and actually the camera became a, a player in the drama, because as the time unfolded, we became less and less welcome. As it seemed, we detected a undercurrent story, a sub-story, that revolved around these three uh, families. Uh, this, what you'll see here, are basically scenes that do not depict that undercurrent. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a fascinating island, and here is uh, Palmerston Atoll as I saw it. Mr. Marsters decreed early on that any visiting boat to his island would be welcomed as a fellow seafarer. Here they are being indeed welcomed, given a mooring, and in return are expected to provide things from their boat uh, that the islanders might need. The customs visit is actually um, from the family itself. There is the customs official, and he is a master's. Very soon after arriving, one is taken in this uh, motorboat through this very small pass through the reef. Uh, each person that comes to Palmerston, each boat, is uh, assigned a family, and they invite you to a lunch uh, at their house. He came to Palmerston to make his day a whole To cultivate for sure things a human to On Tuesday, I returned to the island for an official tour given by one of the brothers of my host family, Simon. Uh, keep in mind there are three families that live here and the boundaries are very important. We begin with the schoolhouse here shown and here's the boundary discussion. The boundary here, it's uh, Akakangaro on this side and the Matavia, uh, the, the Matavia land on that side. This is the boundary. Yes, that's the uh, first uh, you know, cemetery. This is the first cemetery. Yeah, yeah that's the old. Uh, no. This is the reverend of the island, Reverend Matakere. I had a delightful conversation uh, with him that included the following exchange. So you're here in service. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you like it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I love this place. And um, um, tell me why. Well, a lot of fish. That's because I, that's where I come from, I, we love fish, and I know this island, we got plenty of fish, so I know I can survive on this island again. This is the little church on Main Street, and next to it is the original Mr. Marster's home, built from a shipwreck uh, on the atoll in the 1860s. Uh, the church is the one place that the three families really come together and give up their differences. And I always found this, this uh, main street uh, exquisitely beautiful. Making a fan. And what is in the center there? This is a um, pearl shell, pato shell we call it. This is what the outside looks like and this is where the pearl is normally found. Four generations of Marsters all together. As we uh, toured Main Street, I met this boy with the long, long hair, and this is all part of a rite that they go through, that when the boy turns into adolescence, they cut uh, this long, long hair with great ceremony. Uh, my name is Andrew. Andrew? Meho. Meho.
Tell me what you're doing today. Mm, I'm e eating a tomato. Mm. Is it good? Yes. yes. Here we got the free firewoods. And this is our cookhouse. This is where we do most of our outside cooking. Mm. Oh, coffee. Our next stop was the original house of Mr. Marsters, built in the 1860s and uh, built from actually a shipwreck uh, and has survived a century and a half of cyclones in amazingly good condition. Uh, these, uh, uh, these beams is all from the shipwreck. The house has, uh, it was big trees, it's uh, the dust they cargo off the ship. Just using it now for storing, uh, storing uh, things in it. And so do you have a do you have a future use for it? Yes, so we uh, well we are still holding it for the family when they the family comes back they have nowhere to stay while they and we get this cleaned up for from. Um, well, this uh, uh, in the headstone that's uh, William Masters. The original, that's the king of this island. This visit by these fishermen uh, was a result of a bet. I bet they couldn't catch three big fish in one hour. And here he obviously proved me wrong, gave me a piece of fish. But more importantly, perhaps, my boat became very popular when we found uh, that we had uh, hard liquor on it, as uh, drinking is not allowed on Palmerston Island. Wednesday saw me back at the island. Uh, this is my host, Edward, and the day was to feature a, an interview with Mayor Bob, his brother. Are you just uh, go straight to the next one? Go down to the next one and, and then turn up and then go to the white sand and then cut through the white sand. And then I head back to the beach. Oh, you, you follow the, the sticks. The ever-present coconut uh, is an extremely important part of life on the island from feeding the pigs and here all her babies uh, to the chickens uh, and to the humans. It, uh, it's an absolute uh, basic element of living on uh, this atoll. Very delicious. Back on Main Street, uh, the camera always turned out to be a wonderful magnet for children. And finally, the interview so are, with the you mayor. You are Bob Masters. Bob Masters, yes. And you are one of the um, one of the three uh, heads of the family. The yes. Family, right? That's true. Yeah. And uh, you are also the uh, mayor. Mayor. Boston, tell, yes. tell me about what the mayor mayor does. Well, uh, the mayor is only selected in the meeting to chair the meeting up, to chair the meeting, any meeting of the local government. The local council? Yeah, the local council, yeah. I see. And um, and what else does the mayor do? And to... Um, find... Uh, what, how you put it? Uh, well, actually, more work with the council to develop the island. 
something like that? Just before dawn on Friday, I was picked up in a small uh, motorboat and taken to this reef barely a couple of hundred feet from Shearwater. Uh, keep in mind that Shearwater is in water probably two to three thousand feet deep uh, over a ledge actually, and I was dropped off on a reef barely ankle depth. Here the boys are getting ready for a morning of net fishing and they are scouring the lagoon for their prey, the beautiful uh, green parrotfish spears and sticks uh, at the ready. Looking at the green then. If you turn your camera that way you will see the... I can see the splashing. Yep, that's the green fish, uh, the green parrotfish and the white one. The net is let out off the back of this little rowboat um, and then as you will hear they literally beat and shout, uh, scare the fish into the uh, wading net. Average. What's that? Average catch. The catch is then taken out to this wading boat, and you see Shearwater right behind, uh, and dropped off because they actually anticipated catching two or three hundred of these, uh, what is very strange for us, uh, these beautiful blue parrotfish. And here the process starts all over, they're actually on a big piece of coral looking for their new catch. The weather report uh, got everybody concerned. Uh, it was to turn from the north and push the boats toward the reef. So here we are re-mooring Shearwater. Saturday brought a beautiful sunrise, but that was the end of enjoyment for the day uh, and brought home the question of uh, having to film things that one finds very difficult to film. Uh, this was a day of birding and I was in for a nasty surprise.
My visit came to a sort of abrupt end. Uh, the weather uh, turned and is now pushing, as you see, the boats actually onto the reef. Our bows are now facing outwards. And additionally, my camera seemed to start causing problems on the island, and I started to feel a, a strong resistance to filming. And in fact, just before the visit of this boat, which was my host, I was visited by the customs boat and uh, politely urged to leave. Uh, here we are giving my last uh, bag of uh, things, uh, gifts, to them, uh, which is all part of the inherent deal in, in return for a visit to the island. Um, you'll be interested in this little exchange. I indicate that I'd like to film uh, tomorrow, and you'll see the reaction of Ed, Edward at the back of the boat. We don't meet when the weather turns out. I can just give us a call and we say goodbye. Yes, definitely. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. I did in fact leave later that afternoon. The wind had gotten stronger and um, we were being pushed onto that reef. A uh, boat actually had broken off its mooring. So uh, I did, uh, did leave um, rather hastily, but it was certainly uh, urged along by my conviction that my filming had finished, uh, basically because uh, the camera started to become very uh, um, not welcome on the island, indicating that there is a whole interesting undercurrent and um, sub-story that uh, maybe one day um, uh, we will be able to tell. But for the moment, I left Palmerston with all good wishes to its inhabitants and um, headed west to Fiji. He came from far away, from Great Britain.